hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tristan for those that are new here in today's video I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys asked me on Instagram yesterday on Instagram I did a question poll thing because I had gained over 10,000 followers on Instagram I would say in the last three weeks and I'm so grateful for that so I know that obviously because of just the kind of followers I've been getting I literally wake up to DMs and I don't even know how people that have you know thousands of followers do it i don't know but i wake up to messages every day people asking me about literally the things that i post so i thought you know what let me just make a video that perhaps you're a new person you know you just stumbled on my youtube channel you just stumbled on my instagram and you have questions so i'm going to answer the questions i put the poll and you guys let me just show you i have tons of questions i did not even expect that many questions i started answering them on my instagram but it was so it was a lot i had to just go and sleep i think i had like 10 i was like you know i'm going to sleep so some of the the questions if i feel like they they deserve more in-depth videos i might feel that film them i've set aside about an hour today to film videos so let's and i've charged my all my batteries so no battery dying so let's get right into the video so the first question some of these questions i've already answered on instagram as i said so please pardon the tautology and also i think if you did not um see the answers this would be a good watch for you the first, i'm not going to mention people's names i'm just going to you know because some people want privacy someone said did your parents have an issue with you being an entrepreneur the answer is no my parents truly believe in my dreams and i said that you know maybe because my parents both of them are entrepreneurs still date my dad still has his corporate job even though he works for himself my mom used to work you know for an organization many years ago and she's resigned and she's doing her own business full-time so they've never had any issue with it in fact they've always told me that you know even now that i even live abroad instead of me looking for a job they're always telling me put that same effort into your business it will tell in the future so i've taken that advice on board and no they do not have any issue with me being an entrepreneur and also i would also say that um sometimes your parents too in as much as they might want other things for you if they are seeing you follow your dreams you know passionately they're seeing productivity you're not slothful about your business the pro products are coming people are buying your goods and services definitely except the parents you know has another understanding they would definitely support your dreams so that's the first question the second question is how do you take care of yourself like me time huh <sighs> so many things but some of the things that i shared is that you guys the first thing i would say is the mindset i absolutely love myself and i know that it may sound like duh but truly it took me many years to get to this point so i say this with all humility of heart i say this with all understanding i even say it's with all privilege i know people that don't love their eyes they don't love their nose they don't love their legs they don't i love myself every single thing about me i love it i am grateful for the fact that i'm alive i love my eyes my nose my mouth my mind i love everything about myself so the fact that i love myself it's almost it will be a, a what would i call it now a paradox to say that i love myself and i don't take care of myself so i love myself i take care of myself me time is so it could be so challenging you know with a child but my husband too also knows that when it comes to my own self-care this is something that is almost non-negotiable because if i'm not at my best i cannot give my child my best i cannot give my husband my best i'll be forever cranky i'll i'll be moody you know so first things first is the mindset second things are maybe practical things that i do it sounds like a joke but i take a bath every single night like i cannot go to bed without taking a shower i take a bath every night it's morning and night not first of all people think i don't bath in the morning i bath in the morning and i also bath in the night i take my time you see that soak when my daughter is cuddling with her, my husband or she's sleeping i enjoy that i relish spending time with myself as i said i like myself I find out that even, you know, some signs of immaturity is that some people actually do not like spending time with themselves. So you see that they're always all over the place. But when life has shown you shaggy, <laughs> and when you have just grown with age and you have more understanding of who you are in Christ, there's no how that you will not enjoy your own company. I do that. I also said that I put off my phone at specific hours of the night. I know that it was just maybe recently like I kind of changed the hours because I felt like in case of emergencies, you cannot reach me by phone. My phone in me, I've switched off my phone. I rest. I also take care of myself physically. You know, there's a joke that when I was in uni that my, my, my hairdresser in uni, she used to say that, I think her name was Charity. She said that, to say, looking good is your business. And as I say, I'm not saying it's any, any pride. I'm saying it because I like looking nice. I like looking good. So 
it's it's a me thing i enjoy taking care of myself i do my nails i've not done my nails now in almost a month now because i had not the most pleasant experience and i felt like it was raining in my nail bed so i do my manicure my pedicure i spend time alone you know even studying worshiping i listen to a lot of music it gives me just joy I, I, so many things maybe that can be another video as well so yeah that's that the next question is how was Ari Mama's first day of nursery? Ari Mama is a nickname for my nickname for my daughter. Her name is Ari Riolua. We are saying the goodness of God for those that are non-Nigerians. That's her name. Her first day was good. It was okay. It was short hours. It wasn't like you know six hour day because it was called settling in. She was okay, although the, the carer, her key worker there told me that she actually cried after like 30 minutes when she realized that she was there alone and I wasn't there. Also today when I dropped her off, as soon as I was leaving, she burst into tears. It took all the all the grace for me not to burst into tears myself. My eyes were very red. I felt like I was, you know, abandoning my child, but she'll be fine. Even my mom was encouraging me like yesterday that see me too when I was a child, I cried very well. But after three days I, I got a hang of it, so she'll be fine. So that's that. The next question is, how are you so calm and soft-spoken? Is this something you learned or you've always been this way? No, actually. I would say when I was in primary school, I would say I was actually quiet. I wasn't even, I didn't, I didn't used to talk as much, I would say. When I got to uni or high school, I used to talk, but obviously I had a lot of, um, you know, issues in sec. I was a troubled teen. And I wouldn't say troubled like maybe something was happening to me at home. I just, I was, I don't feel like, Mm, this actually might actually be a video. My teen years where I had a lot of things that happened to me that I felt like no teenager should have to experience and it made me not the best I should have been when I was, and I'm saying teen, I'm talking for maybe ages 11 to maybe when I was 15. Yeah, because I went into uni when I was 16 and that was when I literally, God just stepped into my life when I was 17, thereabouts. So it's not like as if I've always been, you know, soft-spoken on call. In fact, with my friends, I think I'm very cheerful, I'm joyful, I'm I'm goofy, but I know the word, you know, when you say calm and soft spoken, it's almost like saying someone is put together, which I get a lot. I think of this, as I said, as you just grow in life and as you grow with age, you realize that there's no need to be aggressive, there's no need to be grag -grag. there's no need to be, just be a little bit calmer, more empathetic, more careful with things that come out of your mouth, just, you know, a little slower. And you smell the roses. That's just the person. And maybe the kind of person I'm married to as well. My husband is the most zen person I know. He doesn't even talk. So that's also, you know, I would say impacted me as well. I remember going to see my friend a while back. And, you know, we had so many plans that, oh, we'll be going now. But um, I, I was just sleeping. I was just resting. I, it's just who I am now. And I absolutely love it. So. Another question says, can you share hair care tips for baby girls between ages 0 to 12 months? I'm not going to dwell on this. I have so much content on this topic on my Instagram. I have highlights on it as well. I'll show here. Please go and watch it. Please. Thank you. And the next question is, um, what advice would you advise a 23-year-old that is open to dating but has been getting the guys that say sex is important in a relationship but as a 23-year-old, you do not want that? Okay. I already answered as well on my Instagram and I said to myself that since you asked me, you did not go and ask someone that you considered not to be a believer. You asked me and you know obviously my stance. The first thing that I said to this person, because I already answered this question on Instagram as well, was that you be grateful to God Almighty that you're even getting to the stage where you're meeting people and they're actually telling you up front, you know, that they want sex and sex is important to them in a, in a dating relationship and it's not something that you want. I'm telling you from experience because I had relationships where when you tell them that you don't want them sex, they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, I love you. And then when you enter into the relationship, as, I, as I'm telling you, as someone that was in uni that was dating a lot, <laughs> Don't do that. Bad. Don't do that. But anyway, that someone has been said that I was dating a lot. They will tell, oh, I love your personality. But then, obviously, these people are human. They are flesh. They are carnal. Same with you as well. Not you that you wrote to me. Me as at that time. They will definitely, over time, coerce you into doing things that you don't want to do. So you find yourself, you make out with them. Worse off, you sleep with them. And then you are going back home. You're asking God for forgiveness of sins. You're speaking in tongues. You're feeling so filthy. You can't even... You feel like you're a walking contradiction, as I like to put it. So don't do it, you know. Be grateful to God that they even told you, you know, on time. Then also, I would say, wait on the Lord. Enjoy your life. Live your life. See, Prince Charming in God's books is not a myth. 
if you walk in God and you walk in obedience and you desire to be married and it's God's perfect will for your life, you will meet a great man that is after God's own heart, that loves you, wants to be committed with you beyond sex, without sex, and is willing to wait to do things the right way, which is the godly way, courting you appropriately, asking your parents for your hand in marriage, getting married to you, and then you guys can have all the sex in the world. In fact, you'll be tired, Seth. If you're, okay, me, I'm never tired, but maybe you, you'll be tired. <laughs> so you have all the sex in the world. And I said something as well. I always say this, if you like, don't agree. It's my channel, I can say what I want. If you are not dating for marriage, you are dating or you are courting for heartbreak. That's what you're doing, because that's what will end it eventually. If you're not courting somebody or even dating wisely towards marriage, you're just going to be having a series of heartbreaks and unfortunately you might not even be able to share with those people that love you okay because you'll be suffering in silence so that's that i'm going to try and keep it quick so that this video is not too long another question is is it okay to feel lost at 24 years old i feel like i don't know what i'm doing and i'm also struggling to get my spiritual life in order i really just don't know okay and i said to her as well that you know what it's not okay to feel like you're lacking purpose but it happens to all of us i've been there you know you can even be 40 years old watching this video 35 40 38 and still feel like you're struggling spiritually not even have a direction for your life but the good news as i said is that you know when a god is not looking for perfection god is just looking for you to have a willing heart why don't you you know take all that burden all that feeling of hopelessness that feeling of loss loss feeling lost take it to god in prayer study the word and you see that if you begin to truly see God with all your heart it will fill you up so you'll be fine sis hang on please hang on I can tell you're very organized how can you please share tips on how you do it I would say I'm pretty organized but I'm not gonna say I'm like you know oh what do you call this woman that used to arrange things and talk to things something mondo whatever her name is I'm not mm -mm, that one to me it's a little bit of extremism but I, I like to, I like things in order. I like my things organized. I just say that I take things. I have a video on this actually many years ago. I have a video on this before I even had a baby. When you take things, put it back. Create a space for everything. Look at my shoes. There's a space for everything. If not, your house will just be upside down. With a child now and also running a business within the house, it's been so challenging to keep my house the standard that I love it. But I know it's just a season, you know. And obviously when we move to a bigger space, a warehouse, there will be more room for me to explore my organization now, you know, or my love for organization. So I would say what I do is just the things that I said and also creating time to clean literally every day. <laughs> Married is shock me. How can I calm down and not put pressure on myself? I would say love yourself. Yes, we all desire to be married. I'm married already. But there was a time in my life where I desired to be married. I desired the companionship that came with marriage. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. You know, find out what God wants you to do per season. See, I said to her when I put it on my Instagram is that these people that say that um, marriage is not an achievement. It's their opinion. They're entitled to it. But I say for myself and a lot of people that might not even want to disagree with them publicly but think what I'm thinking is that to have any healthy relationship, let alone marriage, that brings you peace, that brings you bliss, that causes you to be grateful every day, it's an achievement. Some people don't even have friends because they've been scorned by friends. Some people don't even have, you know, even a church community because of church hurts. How much more choosing to spend the rest of your life with somebody in a healthy marriage where you both love each other, the commitment is 100-100, it's an absolutely great achievement. The capacity to enjoy life, to choose rightly because you made a choice to be married, to choose to remain in the marriage, to be able to settle grievances in such a way that both of you find peace and happiness in the marriage. You don't feel like as if you, know, you have subdued yourself to be in the marriage with this person. It's such a great ach achievement. It's a blessing. It's an achievement. And anybody that is saying differently, that's on them. But for me, being married to your soulmate in this climate, <laughs> it's a great achievement. So as I said to the lady, you know, calm down, enjoy your life, love yourself. You know, love yourself beyond the idea of marriage and don't make it a God. So that's that. Next question is, how can I pray for my God's will for my unborn children. I'm currently pregnant and I would really want to pray God's will over my children. First thing I wanted to add when I replied this lady was study God's word. When you don't know God's plans for all his children, which we can see by scriptures, you know, a life of holiness, a life of productivity, a life of caring for other people, a life of personal excellence, it might be hard for you to pray scriptural based prayers for your children. But when you know God's word, 
you are able to pray them scripturally over your child and also even intercede for your child and tell God, you know what, God, what is your plan and purpose for this child so that I can effectively raise them right? And also pray that God equips you with all that you need through all seasons, seasons of joy, seasons of mourning, seasons of lack, seasons of abundance to raise that child in accordance to God's will. See, our God is able. Pour your heart out. When I was pregnant, oh God, I had so many I had, I think, two major medical diagnoses that they were telling me when I was pregnant. And I don't take credit for this or take glory for this. But I know that I poured my heart out to God. I tarried in God in prayer and literally got turned around. My t like, it turned around those things and I, I can see the testimonies in my child till today. Even the things that, you know, the little things that I prayed for, I can see them in how my child is now. So God is, is faithful and he answers up. As long as our prayers are not, you know, carnally minded you know maybe you want a very attractive looking child or you want a child that has hair reaching her back or a son that is so intelligent so that you can so that you can glorify yourself mm -mm. our god is not a carnal god doesn't mean that he's not going to still satisfy those desires but he's going to do them independent independently of you so study scriptures okay so a lot of things are just saying god bless you and everything around you i love you i say a prayer for you every time you share so much thoughts i love you god bless your wisdom amen Another person asks, do I have a 9 to 5 job or a corporate job aside from entrepreneurship? Sis, if you know, if you have shopped from my business, my business, my entrepreneur is a corporate job. I don't know why. You guys, a lot of people that work 9 to 5 and close by 5 o'clock, you guys are working for entrepreneurs. So me, as I'm working for myself currently, till God empowers me to empower, employ even more people in the UK and back home as well, I am running a corporate job. I'm, my business is, in fact, if I can say 10 to 10, it is possible. Obviously, God is helping me to have a wholesome life balance and still live my life regardless of being defined by entrepreneurship. But no, I work for myself full time. I have about three you know, things that I do. I run two businesses actively. I have a third one that I'm also building currently. I, have, I build fantastic websites for e-commerce businesses. This year, this month, actually, oh, okay, we're in October already because today is like the 5th. Last month, I just completed a really, really great website for UK business and feedback was amazing. I do that as well. I also do content creation. I do reels. I consult for small business owners. So I am not an idle person. I work corporate job working for myself. I hope that answers that question. Someone said, um, I crave... A relationship with God but I work 16 hours and I'm always tired what do I do I think the mindset that see you guys are so if you are a believer and you're a Christian watching this channel I want you to know the difference between being a child of God as a Christian and other religion is that our God is not a God of religion that's one thing I want you to break out for the mindset that you need to maybe you know stay in one place and kabash for you know hundred hours 10 times a day or one hour 10 times a day is good those some some i would say some some what would i call it some level of growth requires habits you know consistent habits but if you know that you work 16 hours why don't you set an alarm of your phone there was a time in my life where i set an alarm on my phone i think it was every three hours if i remember faintly it was it will prompt me say a prayer different topics say a prayer for your parents say a prayer for so in your heart when you go to your bathroom you take your time you fellowship with god and it's not just you know there's prayer and supplication you're not just doing supplications you're fellowshipping with god you're studying scriptures i don't know what kind of job you have if you cannot if it's a job that you work independently a relationship with god includes you know spending time on godly content not all, not all the time just you know scriptures the bible says that we have gifts all of us have gifts if someone has a gift of teaching you can listen to their teaching you can get acquainted with the things that they put out there, the resources that you you find one of the websites that i really love i think it's called um got god questions i will correct myself if i'm wrong i actually go on that website a lot and i find myself googling what does god say about this what does god say about that and i i enjoy the content i read a lot this is just me so you find with the things that you enjoy doing you know spending time with god through the course of the day i was telling my dear friend you know a couple of days ago that i can't count how many times i pray in a day because i don't pray you know prayers that you know i just need to sit down and kneel down and put a scarf on my head no you know i have the holy spirit inside of me so i fellowship with god through the leadership of the holy spirit and i just sometimes i close my eyes and i say you know what you know this person just crossed my mind or this person is currently pregnant i cover them with the blood of jesus everything that concerns them will be good or i say you know what oh holy spirit today i want the boss to come on time 
so that I don't need to wait here under the rain. And I see God in action, you know. So these are some of the ways that you can or you can do that as well. How do you find anxiety with all the negative things happening in the world right now? You guys, there was a point in my life, I think it was around NSARS, that was two years ago, I think, in October. It was, I think, on my dad's birthday or a day before. That period was so challenging for me. My baby was still very little. There was so much chaotic things going on. There was COVID. There was NSARS. I, I've never experienced anxiety in my life until that moment. And I'm talking about anxiety. I didn't even know that was the word of anxiety. I have so much, naturally I'm an empathetic person, I have, and it, it even grew more when I had my child. So that period, I would read the news, I would literally find myself bursting into tears, I would, my heart would be palpitating. So what I just did in that period was that, I think I even put it on my Instagram that I unfollowed every, see from CNN to Pulse to everything, I unfollowed all of them. I don't want to know. I support them. God give peace to the world. But the Bible has already told us that last days, there will be so much chaos going on. So even if you are a believer, you know, just fix your mind on God's promises. Take your mind away from it. And if it's the anxiety, I'm saying from this perspective, because you said with so much sad things happening in the world, I would say find joy in other things. Enjoy fellowship. Enjoy singing. Enjoy sleeping. Put off your lights. Put off your phone. Sleep. You know, give yourself peace. That's one phrase that I've, I use a lot for myself. I t even tell my friends, why don't you give yourself peace? You know, if the whole world is giving you turmoil, you give yourself peace. So those are practical ways I, I would say that, you know, can help with anxiety, especially in today's world. Someone asked again, do you have any other job apart from the beauty business or is the beauty business a side one? So the answer is no, no. This is what I do full time. My <laughs> Where God is taking my business. <laughs> It's, hmm, eyes have not seen and this is me confessing positively don't think I have some stash here I have you by faith you know what eyes have not seen nor ears have heard nor has it come to the heart of any man what God would do for me as an entrepreneur in this land and globally I receive it I believe it I see it and I know it will come to pass if Jesus tarries so no that's my full-time job besides the other things that I said previously in this video how are you able to juggle all you do before Ari Mama started struggling? I'm not sure. I'm struggling here. I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you so much empathy. I understand. Trust me, there were days where I'm just like, I just bundle like this and I just go and put her in a high chair and I put on blippy for her to watch. Or I put on something on TV. Just give me space. I would say how I was able to manage. What I would say is I have such an amazing support system. My parents are not here. My, my brother is here, my husband is here, but they are so, they are so supportive, they are so hands-on. And I know that a lot of people like to say things like, oh, is your husband, he's taking care of his child, is your brother, he's taking care of his niece. No, they are people that they are mothers that give birth to their children and they don't take care of their children. So when you have people in your life that even if it's their responsibility and they're taking that responsibility joyfully, non-grudge, I mean, reflect in your own personal life. Don't you know relationships where the woman does everything if you ask the man to you know look after his kids he will say no if you ask the woman maybe to you know take the kids to school they will grumble so when you have a spouse or a support system that is doing their responsibility it's such a privilege and i know that it seems that it should be their responsibility but it is such it's something that you should be thankful for so i'm just saying this to you that i have a great support system and if perhaps you have a child and the, the parent the other this person is a lady the father of the child is involved and in the same sitting accept help some people don't even think they should do things but do it see till tomorrow my husband feeds my daughter he changes her diaper he baths her on sunday so i can take time to do my makeup to church he knows how to do her hair now although he's a bit aggressive because it makes the hair too tight because he's a man but he's learning and the willingness of it makes my life easier you know it just makes my life easier i entertain her i buy so many activities for her i also burn see as i say always say life is in seasons now my daughter is in nursery now look at me making a video and i'm not saying i really, really leave my tripod i really, really life is in season she's gone to nursery she's going for a few days a week and i'm able to do things more effectively so sometimes in your life you need to pay the price of your child being in the picture struggling so maybe you're even maybe it's able to afford um you know more child care or get more people in your life or whatever it is because you really can't do it all truly and truly it does take a village to raise a child personally for me we chose not to put her in nursery 
until my daughter was able to tell me things it was that's very important to me even now she's not even in full-time nursery because i believe she's still in her formative years and what am i doing if i cannot raise my child to all that god has called her to be you know uh -huh. so that's my answer i pray that god helps you get help when what i did was I, I, I winged it or I won it, if there's a word like that, until just hang in there. You know, life is in season. You're not babies forever. Oh, not a question. I just love how you stay so graceful. I bless the day I found you on YouTube in 2018. This person is so lovely. She's one of my followers that she engages. She's so sweet and I pray that God blesses you. How you don't know me from anywhere and you have taken time to support my channel, support my Instagram. I pray that God blesses you and your comment really warms my heart. What do you do, next question, when people hate you for no reason, whenever, wherever you find yourself? Hmm, that's a really interesting question. Okay, so two things. If people hate you for no reason, that's their problem. But something my friend taught me. Is your mouth anything you like I used to say? Is your heart anything you like I used to think? Your own job is just to continually be a great person. But if you find that, that it's a pattern, that's where there's a challenge. Where it seems like, I hate to sound like this, but... There's almost, it's like when people see you, they have zero affection for you. There's almost like, almost no favor in your life. And I'm saying this thing because I know it's a very sensitive and delicate topic. If you notice that it's a pattern, that maybe at, at, the, at your workplace, you're not favored. When you meet new people, they don't really want to hang around you. Or when you make friends, they're always betraying you. It's either two things. There's something wrong with you. Maybe you're not a kind person. Maybe you're a kind person, but you have problems communicating that kindness. Maybe you have personal, you know, development. Maybe there's something just wrong with you, personality-wise. Or it could be spiritual. So if you're watching this, that you asked me this question, I want you to examine your life, self-reflect, so that you know what drug or what medicine to apply to it. If it's a case of you are the one that you're always going to the wrong places, Maybe you are a believer now and you have, you know, really strong Christian values, but you choose continually to make friends with ungodly people. They will always hate you because you will always come off self-righteous, even where you're not. Because the Bible says the things of the Spirit are like foolishness to those that are without the Spirit. So that's that. Or maybe it's not any of those things, as I said, and it's spiritual. Sis, you need to walk in the Word. You need to renounce every negative marks on your head, like in the case of um, Cain or like Jabez you need to renounce his prayer for the Bible says Jabez prayed unto the Lord for God to turn around his life so that he's not living up to his name or maybe in your case maybe if a long line of hate or no just cause people just don't like you it could be spiritual and I pray that God gives you if I pray with you and I join my faith with you that you receive deliverance from every oppression of Satan if that is the case amen oh this isn't a question. I randomly started following you last year after I saw one of your reels. You've really blessed me in so many ways. I really admire you and I hope I see you when I come to Scotland. You guys, I feel like when I reach a certain level of maybe following on Instagram, I would see, because a lot of new students are actually even moving to Scotland now, I might actually do a uh, get together. I know influencers call it meet and greets, but I might do, maybe when I get to 50k, I'll do it and then maybe even do a giveaway and then you guys can meet. Nothing, I don't like idolatry of any form. If you follow my channel, I don't like the spotlight like that, so I don't like it. I don't like. I don't even like titles. So, but we'll hang out. Maybe we'll do something at the park. Maybe a fun day out and just get to meet each other. So that's that. Next question is, how did you know when you were ready for a relationship or marriage, emotionally and psychologically? I have a full video on this. I think it's called maybe seven or five years after. You know, witnesses to when I knew it was the one. I will link that video in the description box. I think cards no longer work on YouTube. I would have put it here as well. But maybe I'll screenshot the title of this video and place it here so they can look for that video. And I discuss this, you know, extensively. Personally, I would say the only thing I can add to it is that I just knew, but that video explains it in depthly. Next question What products do you use for your wigs? Uh uh. With all the YouTube videos I've been dishing out, you're still asking me. Go and check my hair reviews. I have, I'm sure I have maybe almost 50 hair reviews now. Maybe even more now on YouTube, on YouTube, on Instagram. Please check it out yourself. Don't let this video be too long. Next question. What would you advise? Okay, I'm going to answer just three more and then we'll end this video. What would you advise someone who's on the verge of separation with their spouse? Honestly, I don't like giving advice when I don't know full context. You know, I don't know the full context. Someone who also asked me, I skipped that question because the person never replied. 
and I, she, the, the question is like, similar to this is that how do you manage you know disrespect in the marriage you know maybe I, I didn't really I don't know the context so it's so hard to give um feedback I don't know if it's maybe the person is physically abusing you or emotionally abusing you and you feel like the only the only way is to leave me and pro leave your life to the glory of God first so that you don't die because when you die in a marriage that is abusive you will not fulfill God's plan for your life heck the person will even remarry and maybe even change a new leaf and God will forgive them so the last thing you want to do is do yourself a disservice because you want to manage something that could should have never even happened in the first place if that's the case you know so um i don't know the context so i'm sorry unfortunately i would not be able to give you adequate advice next question is do you mind sharing which contraceptive method you use if it's okay if you do not want to share currently now me and my husband do not have plans on baby making this year or next year <laughs> you know so we use condoms and i'm just keeping it real because i'm tired of i if you follow me you know i always say this i'm tired of the that's what causes people to just make unnecessary assumptions and they don't know i just use condoms because why i love myself i cannot inject anything in my body i cannot put anything on my stomach i cannot remember to take any drug any i love my if my husband is a trained pharmacologist his phd and his masters i think we was in drug discovery and he discouraged me from taking contraceptives because these things on the long run you don't need to agree this is my channel you asked me they always give problems what's the point of using contraceptive when i'm spotting every day what's the point so we just rather use condoms there's so many brands feather light super thin anything you want to use and you know that so as i'm talking to yourself i'm on my period so much joy and happiness i don't miss a beat oh glory to jesus so yes please this is what i use you do not need to follow suit if maybe your husband is allergic to condom I pray that God will give you people clarity. All my friends that I've introduced to this thing, they say, actually, it's actually not that bad. I say, hey, see, the weight of childcare is more than the orgasm that I can possibly get. So, maybe you put in your house, maybe you have like 10 house up. Now, only me, my husband, and my brother. So, please, that's what I use. So, the second to the last question is that, do you like or hate braids? I absolutely love braids. I think they are so beautiful. Well, I'm in a country where... I do not know any salon where I live in. in my, this is some of my dreams as well. And I pray that God brings all my dreams to plan. Where I can go and get my braids done. And four people are braiding my hair at the same time. I don't know anywhere like that in, in Glasgow. It's only one person. And I don't have... I Come on. I'm so tender-headed. I cannot sit down for eight hours. It's a waste of my life. I. That's just the way I see it. I can't do it. Even when people are... They say, oh, the person is so fast. I'm going to see if I can put a picture of myself that I had braids, this was when I was in Nigeria, I did that braids, I finished that braids in like 1 hour 30 minutes, I did it somewhere in Ekbe, and like 5 women were on my head, the braids was finished, so when if I go to Nigeria, I probably will come back with braids, they are so beautiful, I love braids, I just, nobody's doing it for me, they are braid wigs as well, I have 2 braid wigs from DBS Hair, beautiful company, lovely lady, and if I feel like wearing braids, I would style my hair, I also insert the picture of the wig of me in braids, last question you are so beautiful you're pretty i know i say that to to you sometime when i see your picture but how did you get rid of your mom tummy but yeah i can feel picture of stomach in mississippi <laughs> maybe i should put a picture on my belly oh my mom told me oh before pregnancy i'll say that's where it started from i had my stomach was like this like what they call belebe. I had zero, not even, you know, some people are not even married, they don't have kids, and their stomach like this, saying it's like I see they've had four babies, not to mock anybody. I'm just telling you the reality of things. That wasn't me. I was like, when I wear my, maybe I'll look for a picture of me in a dress, everything, sham, sham. Even when I got married, I would tuck in my shirt into my pants. In fact, there was one time when I was still dating my husband. And I came to see him in, um, we were supposed to meet in front of, I think, my old church. And I was standing by the train station just beside my church then in Beautiful Gate. <laughs> and I was standing, I was wearing this denim dress. If I see a picture of that dress, I'll also put it there. And I was waiting in my handbag. And he came to me and he was like, are you sucking your stomach? I'm like, no. He was like, your belly is so flat. And I'm like, eh. And that's because I don't eat noodles. I don't eat late. I was very active. I had a, I was always up and down. So after baby, obviously when I gave birth, I noticed that I, my tummy went down 
Typically, I would say maybe within the first three months, it had gone down considerably. Not to how I was before marriage, because I mean, you guys look at before and after all the pictures I've been showing you. I've gained some adult weight as well, but I did what they call that thing. I wore Tommy Gadu. I think forgot the name. Postpartum belt. I did diet. I was jogging. I did everything to help, and I said I would say that also helped as well. But it's still not. If I just it's like this there will be a difference but not to the point where i won't still be able to suck belly mm -mm, it's not that type so it's still there in fact i'm currently on another weight loss plan now and i'm starting on monday i today i even had a call with the lady beautiful amazing girl so thoughtful so amazing i'm so privileged to have her in my life and i my goal is to lose another see i'm perfect in fact i'm wearing a short dress and i think i look great but I still want to, see, I love my life. I want to live long. So I'm trying to go on a healthier journey, not just losing weight. And it's not just me. I'm doing it for myself and my husband because we could use more, a wholesome lifestyle. People are dying of so many things. So if you can do our own part by eating well, exercising, you guys notice now, I now go swimming every week. You know, just to get a little bit more activity besides walking into, if I'm even buying another plan for me to actually work out and sweat at home i'm paying for it no free youtube stuff i'm paying for it so those are the questions i really enjoyed making this video actually and i hope that it's not too long and i hope that you enjoyed this video as well so thank you guys so much for everyone that's been supporting me since inception i know that in fact sometimes i know it's so easy to compare maybe my content with other influencers even me myself you know sometimes I'd be like ah you know this person started after me and they already have 100k you know subscribers followers but i don't see I don't I don't dwell on those things it's just human when you stumble on their maybe profiles but my own content is different I'm not for virality I only say that if it's just three views I get on my video those that are blessed are blessed those that take the value away take the value away God has even been so faithful to me the kind of brands that he's even been bringing my way with my pure Christian wholesome value content it can only be God so this is even from earning from something that I do out of love so thank you guys so much for watching my video. I love you guys. I'm so grateful. I appreciate you. And if your questions weren't answered, I'm so sorry. Maybe my eyes passed you. I intentionally ignored it. <laughs> but yes. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you again. Until next time. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.